Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com. It is still in the description below. It is still your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am T Masso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a 2018 model year limited edition that is an homage to a similar watch made exactly 25 years earlier in 1993. In rose gold, titanium, and tantalum, this is the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 Meter Limited Edition. When the original Diver 300 Meter bowed in 1993, everyone noticed the core 300 Meter model, which went on to fame on the wrist of James Bond. But there was also a chronograph edition in that collection that had a combination of tantalum, rose gold, and titanium. And that watch seemed more suited to a Bond villain than James Bond himself. Well, it's grandiose glamour returns in this modern day tribute to that original that is better in almost every way. The watch you see right here, diver 300 meter, titanium, no date dial, all three metals brilliantly on display, 42 millimeters in diameter, 13.9 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip, 50 millimeters with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Out of the hand now and onto the wrist, you can see how it wears. Very comfortable, very well fit. Now the key thing here is, whereas the 41 millimeter predecessor had solid end links, this 42 has pivoted end links. So it actually wears the same size as the smaller predecessor. So I can wear this watch easily. I own the 41 millimeter original, and this is a perfect fit for me as well. You can see the over the top angle that always exaggerates the width of the watch. The better angle is the down the barrel where you can see I've got clearance on each side. So if your wrist is 15 centimeters circumference and up, you're gonna wear it well. Here is the cuff shot. It will slide underneath just about all jackets, but not all dress sleeves. The watch is incredibly ornate and specialized. Taking a look first, you can see that we have this tantalum bezel underneath a rose gold bezel insert on top of a titanium case, and then the bracelet puts it all together. We have intermediates in that magical blue-gray tantalum material, rose gold flanking that, titanium flanking that. Remember, I talked about a pivoted end link. The link does not stick out beyond the case. That does wonders for fit. Now you can see we have removable links here fixed by screws, and we have these little incremental sized links. If you find yourself in between sizes, these two micro links can be removed to fine tune. Single fold, thick gauge swing arm in titanium. The clasp includes both polish and satin. Press the twin triggers and it pops open. And then we've got a surprisingly sophisticated clasp for a watch that is technically the entry level of the Seamaster Diver collection. It starts with the Diver 300 meters, goes up to the Planet Oceans, and it peaks with something like the Ultra Deep or the Ploprof. But this now has a lot of the appeal of a Planet Ocean clasp because you get the 9.6 millimeter incremental slider for fine tuning, but then you also get the all or nothing dive extensions. You've got almost 50 millimeters or two inches of full extensible length. We have ceramic spring-loaded pin snaps, so over time, these cannot be worn down by the titanium. So the snappiness of your dive extension will remain intact for the life of the watch. Taking a look at the case, lyre style lugs, we know them well from decades of Speedmaster and Seamaster production. We've known them since the early 60s. It means we have bevels on the outside, but we also have these inward bevels. Now in good taste here, very little has been polished. The watch is mostly satinated. We have polish on the helium escape valve, and we have a few polished accents on the beveled edge of the number plate and the raised and relieved features of the bezel plus the crown. That's really it. Taking a quick look at the number plate, you can see it's being held in place with mixed metal screws, and it is itself hallmarked rose gold. This is number 1,598 of 2,500. Look how they satinated the plate on its top, but then they beveled it on its side. The helium escape valve, this version on this generation of the watch can now be opened when underwater. You don't have to open it before dive. So if you are a saturation diver, and helium might intrude into your watch, you open up this valve, and as internal pressure exceeds external pressure by two to three bar, provided it has been screwed open, the helium will exit without blowing out your crystals and your seals. Now the watch, it actually feels like a steel watch, because we do have titanium here, but then we also have ultra-dense tantalum and rose gold, so the average of all the materials leads to something that weighs about as much as a steel watch, at least that's my impression. We have a 120-click bezel, 
And the one complaint I've always had about this bezel design is that the knurling is actually fairly shallow and not very sharp. So while it's elegant to see, you really want to set the bezel before your hands get wet. Now you line it up with the James Bond style skeletonized minute hand. These are the Bond hands. That's how they've always been known. And now you have a zero to 60 minute count up timer. And I always prefer a dive bezel to a chronograph because it's easier to read. The scale is bigger. I rarely time anything of more than an hour anyway. And you don't have the downstream maintenance costs of a chronograph. Now the standard version of this watch has a date. This dial being special is a no date. And it's also made of titanium, whereas the standard dials are made of ceramic. So you can just see a little T underneath the hand. It actually says titanium. The dial base is media blasted, then these raised relieved waves are metallic brushed. We also have brushed hands, brushed indices, all in rose gold, giving a nice subdued look. The watch has plenty of loom, no shortage, you're going to see that now. And note that the minute hand and the bezel pearl are differentially loomed, so you can quickly read them relative to each other. You won't mistake the minute hand and the hour hand. You can also see all three hands are loomed, which I like to see, because you know in the depths and in the dark that your dive watch is running. There is a hacking or stop seconds function, should you wish to set the watch against a reference time. We have the silk screened image of the seahorse or hippocampus on the back. Underneath that, caliber 8806. 8806 is the note 8 version of the 80. Now it's got a automatic winding system, ceramic bearings, 55 hour power reserve, stop seconds, shock resistant with a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance, anti-magnetic with an anti-magnetic escapement, balance, balance staff, and silicon hairspring. It's basically a-magnetic. That's what master chronometer means, METAS certification, which is the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology standard developed with Omega, but it's an open standard. Tudor also creates Meta's chronometers. It is a full test of the watch, meaning not just the bare movement in five positions like the COSC, six positions fully cased up for chronometry, for winding efficiency, for power reserve, for water resistance, overall durability, shock resistance, and anti-magnetism. All of these are tested in the master chronometer test. Pivots on 35 joules does the latest coaxial escapement, which is a double impulse, direct and indirect impulse system that uses tangential friction rather than sliding friction of a conventional Swiss lever to improve power reserve, chronometry, and reduce maintenance requirements. And of course, this system invented by George Daniels probably remains the most exotic escapement that you can get for under $50,000, and the Daniels connection to an independent horological grate is genuinely cool. 55 hours of power reserve again via a single mainspring barrel. Reach out to Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Oh, and fun fact, because it has a silicon hairspring, it has a quirky swatch group-wide silicon hairspring beat rate of 25,200 vibrations per hour. I am Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for pricing.